Today we're doing an experiment into the temperature changes of a neutralization reaction. We're going to be using two molar hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, so I'm using my safety goggles as should you. The first thing you're going to do is take a polystyrene cup and put it into a beaker. Now we're going to do that for safety so that we don't tip it over and knock over the acid or the alkali that we don't particularly want on our hands. The next thing you're going to do is take your thermometer and pop a hole through this lid like so and make sure that it sits in nicely into the cup without going through the bottom. We're using a polystyrene cup and lid because less heat will escape from either out of the top or out of the sides of the container. So first you're going to take your hydrochloric acid and pour 30 centimetres cubed into the 50 centimetres cubed measuring cylinder. Now in order to get this precise we're going to start off by getting close to 30 mil but then we're going to finish off using a dropping pipette and reading to the bottom of the meniscus. When the bottom of the meniscus reads 30 centimetres cubed, pour the hydrochloric acid into the cup. You need to record the starting temperature of the solution. So we're going to take a reading by putting the lid on and reading to the temperature that it gets to. And record this as an initial temperature. So on mine it's 24 degrees Celsius. We need to take the lid off and using the 10 centimetres cubed measuring cylinder measure 5 centimetres cubed of the sodium hydroxide. Now I'm going to measure this using the pipette only because it's such a small quantity. Once again measuring precisely with the pipette and reading to the bottom of the meniscus Now when you're ready, you need to pour the sodium hydroxide into the cup and quickly place the lid on. You're going to stir gently with the thermometer just to make sure the heat energy is distributed evenly throughout the solution. What you're then looking for is a change in temperature and you're going to record the maximum change in temperature, so when it stops going up anymore. So my final temperature, when adding 5 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide, was 26 degrees Celsius. That goes in the second column of your table. Now you're going to repeat this experiment, adding 5 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide extra each time. So going up from 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 and so on. When adding your sodium hydroxide, make sure you've got the 5 centimetres cube ready to add before you lift the lid. That ensures that as little heat is lost as possible. We're going to repeat this by adding a further 5 centimetres cubed to make it 10 centimetres cubed in total. Recording once again with a dropping pipette, measuring precisely and reading to the bottom of the meniscus Add the second 5 centimetres cubed, so we've now got 30 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid and 10 centimetres cubed of sodium hydroxide. Once again, stir to make sure the heat energy is spread as much as possible, and then read the maximum temperature reached. So mine's now gone up to 27 degrees Celsius. Keep adding 5 centimetres cubed up to 40 centimetres cubed total of sodium hydroxide, recording the temperature after each addition. So the quicker you are adding the sodium hydroxide to the solution, the less heat is lost each time. And that's the whole idea of this experiment, given that it's about temperature changes in an exothermic reaction. You may begin to see the temperature level out as you get to larger quantities of the sodium hydroxide, and it may even start to drop at times. Try to think about why that is in terms of limiting reactants and heat transfer.